the living room where the family meets to discuss issues any issue which may be bothering one of the family members that's what we do each and every tuesday on WAC 90.1 fm with ricardo mitchell and dj aaron 868 we have casual conversations on serious topics from sports to culture mental health to economics relationships to life lessons join us each and every tuesday on WAC 90.1 fm the living room casual conversations on serious topics It is now 6 p.m. or a minute after or two here in Trinidad and Tobago. I don't know what time it is where you are, but I'm glad to know you're locked onto the True Nation station, WACK 90.1 FM, where we are... Culture k k, -k crazy First and foremost, let's kick this off as we always do, all right? Must give thanks and praises to the Almighty for granting us the gift of life and seeing another day. No matter what time of day it is, you must always... Give thanks. Secondly, we must say thank you to those that went before us and we are not just talking about the our ancestors, the original inhabitants of Trinidad and Tobago because we all know, accept, reiterate and they say it with we chest that Columbus lied. But also to our brother in music, Tony P, where the P this week stands for... Pressure by Aaron by... Pressure. <laughs> I deny a black man song? No, no, no. Pressure has in pressure any camp here. And you see what's going on this last week in yeah, Trinidad but... and Tobago? Yeah. Hmm. Prince yeah. Song making the headlines every day or every other day. Yeah, boy. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, it is Mental Health Month. And as your, your show or your event last week said, I am my brother. So, let's make sure and check in on our brothers. Because we can't keep seeing them kind of headlines and not try to prevent something like that ha from happening again. So let's check in on our brothers. Follow up with our sisters. And make sure that everything is okay. And if something is beyond your remit to handle, you can always reach out to our company. Like the company that our guest today functions from and functions through. To get that psychological help, should it be something that you can't handle on your own? Smooth. Yeah, of yeah. Course. Yeah, you can mean like shilling, like shilling flavored baby oil. Wicked on that segue. Yeah, yeah, you can mean smooth. Shilling flavored baby oil? I will never forgive you for that day, Iran. Iran walking in the people in them studio. Right, so they start to see all the paint and things start to curl on the wall, you know. <laughs> like the shilling oil bottle opening the pocket. I said, what's going on here, boy? But I still smell it. little shilling oil. This is The Living Room with your Australian DJ Aaron 868. I remind you each and every time that culture is my code. I sit here today alongside my bro bro with no fro, a lot of flow, <laughs> always in the know and on the oh. go. Mm -hmm. Ricardo Mitchell, the social stage on the global stage. And I don't have a catchy catchphrase to introduce our guest today. I don't but know I, why. I've been here so many times. I'm not going to say that, but one thing I could proudly say is she is... A young lady who has made mental health a trendy topic here in Trinidad and Tobago via her podcast, Chit Chat with Two T's, via her practice, Ecrelieb TT, and also the fact that she's probably, just like her water covers 70% of the earth, JL knows 70% of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. I feel attacked, but it's okay. That is an actual fact. <laughs> actual. <laughs> factual factual but sitting in with us today none other than a resident inside the living room counseling psychologist miss jl valdez yay me hello everyone hello living room listeners and viewers it's my pleasure to be back y'all kept my room cozy for me my absence thank you very much Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every now and then. Okay, I appreciate that. Nobody likes dusty sheets. Febreze and hot sun. 
Yes, thank you. I'm getting some hot sun these days. Hot sun, rain in the middle of the hot sun. Mother Nature's menopausal. Wow. Mm-hmm. I think that's the first time I ever heard that comparison there. You're welcome. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember Jill have a lot of communication experience now too. Eh? I mean, she's been doing the things. Huh. Alongside yeah. you, social sage. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we, we, we've done a thing. We're doing a thing. We're, done. We're doing a thing. Mm-hmm. Ironically though, Jill's, the thing that has the most views on Jill's YouTube channel is not our program, but she was a guest on something else. So it's, it, just, it just goes to show you. She's she's out there. She's out there. But I'm not gonna say if you don't know what we are talking about because most of us who listen to work religiously listen to the living room every week. Mm-hmm. If you're looking for a little more tea on mental mm-hmm. health, check out Chit Chat with two T's. All you have to do is search for Ecrelib on YouTube or just search Chit Chat and put an extra tea at the end. Or Jail Valdez. Or Jail Valdez. Mm-hmm. I just got something that might be easier for them to spell now. You chit chat. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're right. All right. Um, so we're going to, as it's Mental Health Month, you know how passionate we are in the living room about mental health. So we want to, to have a dedicated show talking about mental health. But we want to swing it a little bit to factor in some of the, the conversations that we hear, some of the back and forth that we hear via social media and also in our hallways mm-hmm. all right but before we get to that hallway we must enter the front door by asking our guests our traditional question mm-hmm. we don't ask <clears throat> the scene jelly bean where's the word hummingbird or what's the gist psychologist huh? ask you jl how are you um well i'm really tired to be quite honest but i'm happy to be here i'm happy to be here so all things being considered i mean it could be worse but it could also be better so being in the middle isn't too bad mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear counting money does get people tired well i heard that as well <laughs> so did I. Which, I wish that was why i was tired um i have a little puppy and he's been keeping me keeping me up so you know <laughs> he's a lot but he's very adorable so um just one little co- correction so mental health will will mental health month is actually me but we do celebrate mental health day in october it's okay weird. it's a weird thing because for yeah. years we always look at it that october is mental health month yeah so I think we need to, we need to shift that narrative and really start. You know what? Let's just make mental health a year round thing. I think so. That would that would work. Yeah. That would work well, for I, me. Well, I see. As we did, um, I am my brother last week. Uh, How was so that? It was amazing. It was by all reports, it was a, a mind blowing experience. We had thirty I'm so men. Happy to hear that. Thirty many? men. Thirty. From right. the ages of 22 to 76. Sure. Wow, 76. Yeah, we, we had every generation. Uh, people who have no kids to people who have great grands. Uh, we had <clears throat> married guys, single guys, guys who in complicated <laughs> to take other situationships. Situationships, etc. Um ethnicity. In Trinidad, as a big properly represented, I was like, Beautiful. "Well, all right." It was that I, I was, uh, it was a nice one, and we went back home with icebreakers. Like we did not need to encourage <laughs> conversation. We literally That's started. Beautiful for men, especially. And, I'm so happy yeah, to hear that. We were lining up to contributors. I, I was very respectful, very transparent, mm-hmm. and the thing is, we so knee deep in mental health work that I did not even realize that that event was on World Mental Health Day. I thought that was intentional. I thought so as well. No, we were supposed to have done the event maybe two or three months Before, ago. Before, yes, that's true. Yeah, and Dr. Dominic Dos Santos had to travel. So by the time Dr. Dos Santos, um, Paisley Placid, myself, K. 
Kivo and uh, Matthew Sylvester could have gotten together. That was that was a date, and it would have been a weekend. But we thought, let's catch you guys during the week when there's less competition for time. Mm-hmm. And it ended up by God's out. grace being World Mental Health Day. So um, mm-hmm. big up you fellas. Nice. Really, really proud that that initiative went off how it did and was successful. Sorry, I couldn't attend, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah actually. Yeah. Actually, did my own mental health outreach last week, Thursday, Look with you, with Peepsil Consultancy Limited, where we would have um, gone into a couple of schools, and we still have a couple more schools to do before the end of the month, giving mental health outreaches to the teenagers of Trinidad and Tobago. Lovely, that's a wonderful initiative. Oh. Yeah. So big up, big up, you guys, um, for being a part of the community, the environment. That allows me to function in these spaces that I do. Proud of you. Right. And you. Uh, yeah, proud of you as well. Because we're here today. Because one of the key things that we have to discuss about mental health is the stigma attached to it. Some of the misconceptions. And just off the bat, you mentioned in, in last week in I Am My Brother, there was a gentleman who was 76. Mm-hmm. And... He was there and he was sharing, I'm sure, and open to sharing. Mm -hmm. Whereas there are other persons who would be from that generation who are very closed off to the idea of mental health. Right? So, and I'll just use the common colloquial term, a lot of the older persons may think that tugging it out is the best coping mechanism when there's mental health struggles. Jill. Yes. Could you help me understand why the older generation may think that thugging it out is as a, the go-to coping mechanism? Well, I'm a baby, so I don't really know about the older folks. I can. So you know that there's uh, classifications for different generations. Um, you know, of course, within our age range, we are most fam- mostly familiar with Generation X, Generation Y, a.k.a. the Millennials, and Generation Z, right? Or the Gen Zers. And then, of course, coming up after them, we have the Gen Alphas, right? So, yeah, it's a lot happening. It's a lot going on. Um, But before Generation X, we also have the Baby Boomers, which is where I think a lot of our parents may fall um, within that generation. So, you're asking about older people? Yeah. Let's go with the boomers. Okay. So the boomers would have been raised by the silence generation, right? They were very much about keeping their heads down, working within the system, you know, not causing too much back and forth for want of a better day. And so coming out from that, they would have also been trained, educated to do just that. Like you just have to do what you have to do. We're about hard work. We get things done. And yes, circumstances may be difficult, but you just have to do what you have to do or else things don't get done. So in my opinion, I do believe that that was probably one of the reasons why they have that sense of, you know, you just do what you have to do because that's how they were trained. That's how they were raised. That's what they knew. And of course, back then, the whole idea of mental health the way we know it now, it was not known that way. It was not as widely accessible as it is today. And it was not a part of the general uh, everyday lexicon language of any of the society back then. Not the way we have it now. So I think while people were experiencing a lot of the things we are experiencing now, they didn't have a language for it. They didn't have names for it or words for it to say, well, I'm depressed. You know, or I'm anxious, or I don't think that they had the language to deal with it. You feel sad? Okay, but you have five kids. So what are you going to do? Sit around and be sad? You have to make sure that they're okay. So I think I think that that was probably where that came from. Yeah. Uh, one, one of the sentiments the um, elder gentleman expressed was that we were fortunate as men to have a community space because in their timing, they didn't have that they could not do that you couldn't no. get these strangers coming together to talk about what they're dealing with 
He was like, you had to suck it up and figure it out. That's right. Just just do it. Just get on with it. That's it. Yeah. And I think why this was one of the questions that I, I wanted to include inside today's conversation. Mm-hmm. When my my grandfather was in the latter stages of his life, we were having a conversation. Me, or sorry, his sister, him and I, we were sitting in the living room having a conversation. And he was trying to get me to explain to him what stress was. Mm. And after going through the clinical definition of it and, and all the Google definitions of it, he was like... <laughs> I never experienced this in my life. Mm-hmm. And then he said to me, but wait. No, I did. But I wouldn't have called it stress. It was just a bit of a hard time. And I had to work around that hard time because as Ricardo just said, I think well, I think it was jail. I have mm-hmm. five children. So I had to make yeah. sure it, I can't let down my family. So exactly. I do have, one, it was I do have time to study it. But two, the language the the wasn't developed yet. Yeah. T- and Especially in the Caribbean. Mm, I'm not gonna say that part too. Mm-hmm. But it also brings up the next point in it that BC, and as Ricardo, I know BC doesn't mean before Christ, it means before COVID. Yeah. A lot of us still viewed mental health as a trivial thing. It was Oh gosh, I'm feeling anxious or depressed and that is it. But all Mm -hmm. of a sudden, COVID, mental health was taken seriously for whatever reason. It could be that we were all cooped up at home and we now had the time to really develop the conversation about it. But why do you think that BC and AV, which is after virus, um... (laughs) Yeah. <sighs> All right, Aaron. Ooh. All right. Okay. I think you know what happened is that he started really strong. Yeah, he, he came in really smoothly, mm-hmm. and, and he hit us for six like twice, and then and he got he got caught for six. I. All right. You know what, Aaron? Yeah. Hey. Good. If you shy. like it, we love it. I, I, if you I, like I, it, we love it. I was like shy. Hope Sunday. Good strike read. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, right? What? Really and truly, I want to know why is it that all of a sudden this conversation about mental health is now at the fore? Like we know it, we know it's important. It has existed, but why all of a sudden mental health is just the end thing? Um, that's a really good question. I don't think it's all of a sudden. I think it has been really gradual. But for people probably who are not um, very aware, people who may not be in um the industry the business the way we are it seems like all of a sudden but it's pretty gradual um my earliest recollection of uh mental health on a more or less public scale would be um maybe as early as 2007 i remember i was in university that i had just completed my first year and i was about to do i was doing an internship at bhp bulletin um at invaders Bay in port of spain and they were very much about mental health without saying we're about mental health so well not in so many ways so like they actually had like a mental health room so if at any point in time the employees felt like stressed during the day they could go they could sit in like one of these um massage chairs and just relax and they would have like those soothing songs playing and they could they could do that um and that was when i probably would have first become aware of some version of employee assistance um you know being provided for them they had access to that because i always wanted to be i envisioned myself being a psychologist on site in a business like that and that's when they were like well no we don't have somebody on site we refer externally to a third party you know that kind of thing so that was my first um introduction to it and what eap was and eap would have well been in existence by 2007 right but of course if you're not working in a company that has that you wouldn't necessarily be aware of it right so um even something as some i think just recognizing as well that a happy employee is a productive employee that also contributed to mental health so again eap and understanding the link between um 
and employees' well-being and the level of productivity. So something as simple as like every Tuesday was fruit day, you know, and they would just have fruits on, they occupied two floors of the building and they would have fruits in the different departments and you could just go and take fruits. You could just go and take it out. And that's something so simple, but I think it really went a long way in just making employees feel valued, right? So at least from that perspective, we have mental health in a wider um, environment. Again, coming back to what I was saying when you when you were speaking to me previously about um, you know the older generation, right now twenty twenty four it's so accessible. You know we are in the in the age of smartphones and information at our fingertips, and so we have more accessibility to what mental health is. We now have the language developed for that, and because we do. Um, it's easier to notice, it's easier to observe, it's easier to put words to feelings, to identify those things. And of course, because it's more in the mainstream media, I mean, now you're watching TV shows, cartoons, and you're hearing about different aspects of mental health. It's it's very commonplace now to hear somebody say, oh yeah, I want to see my, you know, you're watching a show and they're like, yeah, well, I was talking to my therapist. And so, 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 you know, and that's even being worked into a lot of the shows that we listen to, um, that we look at, sorry, music that we listen to, you know? So I think it's just that it's very much more, um, widely accessible and acceptable because there was also a period in time. I mean, it still exists like that to, um, a large extent, not just within Trinidad and Tobago, but regionally, but there was a period in time where mental health was extremely taboo. And so again, that would have contributed to why it seems like it's all of a sudden. Because it's, I mean, it's been here, but how accessible has it been? How open has it been? Um, so I think that would have contributed to why, you know, it's kind of in our faces right now. COVID really brought a lot to the forefront. Um, I think it just, people were at that point where they felt more comfortable to speak about it. Maybe because it was more acceptable because more people were talking about it because we were all at home and couldn't go anywhere. And, you know, we were with our family members and we were all managing, how do we work from home? How do we work from home with our family? Like, so we were all experienced and we had that collective experience as unique as it would have been, um, collective experience of mental health at that time. And so it made it a little bit easier for us to speak about. Yeah. Totally agree with that. Um, so much so. Uh, Aaron, I, I don't to support what Jella has been saying. Uh, this is not sudden by any stretch of the imagination. None of it is sudden. It was one of those things where like, you know, when water boiling, you don't see anything happening in the pot. And then you see a bubble or two. And then you blink twice. And that entire pot of water is bubbling. Or like when a frying yeah. planting. It looking mm. like it's not cooking until you sneeze and by the time you say bless you you the plant and burn right mm -hmm. like right now even the um the president of the epa is a trainee right big the, up daryl joseph big up daryl joseph a trainee is the first president of the employer assistance program international providers um, mm -hmm. association yeah. mm -hmm. right he's the first one who is not northwest uh, um north american in something like 50 years right or ever it is not uncommon and a lot of that has to do with the way that culture has been very deliberate about destigmatizing mental health we all know of looking at movies even since the 90s where people would go and take spa days right mm -hmm. or you would hear of um people i wanted to be a motivational speaker a motivational speaker as a phrase did not even exist until maybe in the 80s mm -hmm. right anything prior to that you would hear people talking about mental health and wellness as being very hippie yeah. you know it was a, it it's was a kind of people right that's what people would say they even say it sometimes in 2024 some people will still say that's for white people mm -hmm. that's for rich people that's not for everybody else even now talking about your feelings like Peter said, the youths the youths send them onto something because uh, having a taken a mental health day we didn't know nothing about taking a mental health day mm -hmm. until recently. They have slang that incorporates mental health in terms of like having a mentee B, which is what they would call a mental breakdown. What? Oh. Yeah, mentee B. Right? 
what I'm saying is that the culture is such mm-hmm. that we it is no longer the taboo that it was. Right? Mm-hmm. So t- yeah, in, in some ways it might seem like the fry plant in of um hot button topics, but in all reality it has been cooking for a long yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Now the now I have to pose the questions this way because if the three of us sit and have a conversation like this, it'll just be an echo chamber. Because I myself have been working in a mental health institution for now the past 15 years. I didn't even realize it was so long. Did we just do that? Apparently. I thought you used to play music there originally. I thought it was a sports company. You know? Wow. Wow. (laughs) But yeah, I've been working with a company that deals with that. I'm working at an EAP for the past 15 years. So mental health has been a constant conversation and i can't say from the minute where i started to now there has been a drastic overhaul in the way that mental health has been viewed not just by the company itself but by all the companies that access the service and the country as a whole so we all have our different stories i like the planting analogy ricardo i love that Yes, I will steal it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I could pull an analogy out of... Didn't I? Yeah, I was going to say that, but I was going to come up with a fresh analogy for it now. Yeah, but yeah. Before the show done. That's the case. I know you could go rogue sometimes. Now, so oh, listen. A... <laughs> you just get wild. <laughs> That's why I was like, let me just slip this in there before we... Before control. We go control the... Be- yeah, you know, yeah. Clip. It's a healthy, yeah, just it was a healthy it in, channel. Just bring it in. Yeah. Reel it in. Mm-hmm. And so much so I, I saw, and this is to address the elephant in the room at one of the more popular um, stories that would have happened in Trinidad and Tobago recently with the death of the young man in from St. Stephen's, mm-hmm. where they spoke of the access to guidance counselors in school. And I want to pose this question not just to the listeners. Who are locking in now to back 90.1 FM, but also to the three of us in here. When we were in secondary school, was there a guidance counselor there? There wasn't one present, but we had access. There was access to one if needed. Hmm. Yeah, well, I'm marginally older than you, young uns, um, or well, whipper snappers. I remember mm-hmm. having a dean of discipline. Okay. I do recall it having a guidance officer. I do recall there being a dean of discipline. Right. Um, and there were certain teachers who had a bit more of um a bit more finesse and a bit more of um a nurturing spirit. But in terms of having an, an appointed guidance officer, I can't Why recall that. Thinking? I can't recall that being a thing in the early to mid nineties. No, you're right. It wasn't. It wasn't a thing even in the late nineties to early aughts. I don't think mm. that was a. Yeah. What what the problem for me is? I'm mixing up my experiences. So I would have worked in guidance, um, for two years, and yeah, that would have been 20, 20, 12 to twenty fourteen. But when I was in school, no, I don't think we had a guidance officer, or even that we would have that one would have been accessible no yeah i don't recall having an officer per se there were uh, there were a lot more visible support systems than there are now though yeah that was that's that's the ironic thing about it because there wasn't someone who was designated this space there were a lot more members of the faculty and support staff and even um you know parents and that type of thing who were uh, more immediately involved but then I guess when they formalized the structure, it made it difficult for somebody who was not within the system or registered to function within the system to make that input. Case in point, you could have, the same way back in our day, you could have get disciplined. You could have get a hug. Mm. And now both are not just frowned upon, but could probably cause you work. So, That's a whole situation there. Yeah. I just, I just saying, um, I just saying the elephant, the elephant in the room is a multicolored, uncomplicated one, I'm more like a snuffle up August than an elephant. What? Mm. There we go. The analogies. They're all snuffy. 
But Snuffy was a figment of our imagination. But so I was that. about to say, well, is that really the best analogy? Because he was him. imaginary. Was he a figment of the imagination or people didn't believe him until they saw him themselves? People didn't I believe think, Big Bird. I think people were playing along for Big Bird's sake. Okay, and but you want to really think about it too there's a lot of what happens with our mental health in Trinidad and Tobago we just play along until it becomes real to us mm-hmm. I well, literally anything, really yeah mm-hmm. we literally yesterday morning walking up <laughs> there was a young woman who's clearly having an episode right and she was screaming and she was screaming and walking very very calm very steady pace and just screaming and quarreling with someone who was walking just ahead of her and the story was that she was following him clearly disturbed and distraught and distressed but they were going up the promenade to go to the hospital because apparently she was off her meds so while she was quarreling she's they're walking very very calmly and very determinedly to the hospital mm-hmm. uh, and back in the day i'd be like Hmm, they're mad people this that and the other thing 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 but now it's more of a all right what is that story oh, okay that's what's happening there, mm-hmm. there was a different attention and a different interest to what there would have been before and not only that too we've seen over the weekend unfortunately a young man lost his life um when police intervened um well there was an encounter with the police during an episode he was having right uh so is it is real to us now that there's no longer the family member who we don't talk about or you know who's shut up in the house 24 7. we are very well aware of the fact that um there are things that are no longer external or secret they are things that are happening to in our families in within our societies and our communities and we have to start addressing them mm-hmm now the thing is despite the fact that all of us may own a smartphone Hmm. that all of us may watch tv or browse social media a lot of us are still within the bubble that mental health is taboo and conversations like what we are having here conversations like what jl has on chit chat conversations like sometimes what you may see on the news mm-hmm. or some articles you may read in the papers may assist you in breaking that stigma about mental health and as i could speak for myself here as i constantly say the day that you stop learning is the day you begin to die so learn something about mental health because it may not help you alone it could help a family member it could help a friend, it could help a co-worker, or it could help a fellow citizen. And knowing about mental health could aid you in becoming a better citizen in Trinidad and Tobago. And well, around the world as well, because I forget WAC is global. Right? Now, as we continue our conversation tonight, a lot of I think what we we class as what we are millennials, right? Ricardo, yeah. might, Ricardo might be. Might be out. Is, is you, are you out of it, Ricardo? He's, he's think it's from big. nineteen. Think it's from nineteen eighty or eighty one. Yeah, yeah right. millennials are nineteen eighty one to ninety six. Yeah, I'm a millennial. <laughs> You're like I'm the first only, millennial, or <laughs> like third in line, <laughs> right there um wow mm-hmm. that is okay so we name calling now yeah i am mm-hmm. i am a millennial barely mm-hmm. barely. Right, barely depending on who oh. you ask some of them does actually um start counting millennial from like 1984. Mm. Yeah. Barely. yeah barely 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 the goalposts keep moving anyhow yeah but us millennials would have now gone into the era where mental health is taboo but because we are that bridge between not wanting to to force too much and having a laissez fair attitude about some things, we still have the ability to want to learn more, but also maintain a structure. Whereas there are other generations who are more in tune with mental health and more accepting of it and could be viewed as 
that generation soft. For those of you who are listening on radio, because this, beside WAP being visual, we also are still on the band, 90.1 FM. I just did the air quotes on soft. Yeah, and big up, big up, big up the several taxi drivers I've encountered over the past few weeks who have been playing, months actually, who listen to WAC. Yeah. And since since we're big enough, people, I must say a special, special good evening to, to a few special ladies that I met on Saturday night. Rhonda, oh, yeah. yeah, Rhonda, LV and the gang. I met them at a 70th birthday party and I said that I would make sure and say good night to them tonight. So a special good night to Rhonda, LV, the gang, Auntie Mary and the entire crew of that listens to WAC 90.1 FM religiously. Lovely. Right? Mm. But back to the to the question. So we some persons may view the, the, the younger generation as soft because they are more aware. And they know the terms. As as Ricardo called it just now, what a menti B. Yeah. Menti How about a menti B. B. Yeah. I, I never heard that before. Same. You know, remember, I ain't touching the streets too now. Listen. Right? My inner child Listen. alive and well, dog. You know nah why he ain't, you know why he ain't touch with the streets, Ricardo? Nah, bye. Because he has trod the streets every day from home to the doubles, man. Ooh, Whoa. Whoa. I'll have you know, <laughs> I don't have to do that anymore. My neighbor <laughs> sells doubles. So don't get tired, up, dog. I am in paradise. Wow. Wild. Listen. Anyway, let me message him. <laughs> you were wow. Right? So some persons may be the younger generation are soft because they know the terms, they know the definitions, they know the signs. Whereas some of the older generation, they may be experiencing the signs, but they don't know where it is. Which one, and I had to choose the words carefully for this eh, because I don't want it to come across as me being a looking down on any generation here. But with all those things being said, the terms and all, all the different um, points of accessibility, which one do you see is, is, the, is, is classing the generation as soft really the thing to do? Or is it that they are more aware, more educated on it? Um, that's a layered question. I don't, I don't think it has anything to do with being soft. Um, I can see both sides of any situation. It's my blessing and my curse. So I will say that there has to, there's always boundaries. And I think it's always difficult to manage those boundaries. So whereas the older generations would have been accustomed to, as you said earlier, kind of thugging it out. And the younger generations, we now have the language. Um, of course, having a name for everything or you know access, accessing certain feelings and stuff that could appear to to somebody who is not accustomed to that as being soft um that being said sometimes i do believe that there are people um especially the younger sets who would kind of push those things in front as reasons to not um accept accountability or responsibility for things um as excuses to get out of situations or to not do things and so i think it's very important for us to be mindful of that so sometimes i mean is it i don't necessarily think it's soft in either in either setting but i do understand why there could be that perception by the older generations um you know and i do understand why conversely that the younger ones may think that the older ones had or that they don't know anything air quotes mm-hmm. quote unquote so yeah don't know if that answers your question <laughs> it, it, it it does and mm-hmm. I, 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 i'm gonna um share a little bit on this one here because i remember the first time someone within a company that i work for what did work for um a younger employee came and said i need a mental health day and i said okay because i'm trying to be understanding and accepting of it and then the person coming to me i said no problem have the day however please also peruse this brochure with a, 
because if you're saying that you're experiencing some mental health issues please see this brochure with who you can access help through the company will cover that for you lo and behold the person took the day then the next the, the day go on the next morning come to the town what yeah boy well i went and do so by so yesterday i'm so 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 and i'm listening to this like did you really take a mental health day or is it that you take the day to go and utilize substances <laughs> well that was that was for his mental health <laughs> right <laughs> I, I <laughs> what Mohammed says in the name of the thing? What's that? The thing What's Mohammed um oh god no, um the, the, the substance um oh, the for, for the anxiety now. Oh ashwagandha. Ashwagandha. Right. 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 So I say that to say this. I understand JL's two pronged approach to it where both sides of the coin have valid arguments. However, sometimes there are persons that make it difficult for the older generation to accept the younger persons be more vocal about mental health because they utilize it to do things which are unbecoming which can cause more mental harm in the long run than solutions in the short run because one of the things we have to accept is that you you may establish healthy coping mechanisms but sometimes abuse of a healthy coping mechanism is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So for the younger generation, I'm just saying, be very careful with the coping mechanisms that you are using, please. Mm. Yes, nice. you can. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying nothing. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm trying to learn something. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. I, will, I will tell you. Uh, we have a responsibility to educate leadership and management as much as we have a responsibility to school these young ones as to how to recognize what your challenges are and not let them define you. Yeah. Right. There's a there's a thing. Listen, listen don't don't get up. They didn't invent ADHD and anxiety and sensory overload. And they didn't invent these things over the past 10 or 15 years. They might have labeled them, but they didn't invent them. And they didn't prevent... No, I'm not saying that mental health issues aren't to be taken seriously. I'm an advocate for mental health, mental well-being, holistic wellness. What I am saying... It is having identified what your challenge is does not excuse you from having to at least attempt to navigate said challenge. Absolutely. Okay. Accountability is, is key. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've seen situations where, all right, once I find the right person to sign this paperwork saying that I have this, that, or the other, I am now permitted to function or not function however I am comfortable because of that thing. There is, mm -hmm. there is a danger and society has a tendency to regulate itself, right? The pendulum does swing from one side to the other and back. And sometimes when we block enough, we find a space in the middle where we acknowledge the presence of the extremes and we find a social norm within the middle that we could agree to function within. We have generations that were severely traumatized and did not know that that was what the word was for what was happening to them, right? Mm -hmm. So I had to walk eight miles when I was small to do this, that, <laughs> and the other, all well and good, right? And we think when they say those things like, oh my gosh, y'all are cavemen. And they think you not being able to come out of your bedroom to get something to eat, <laughs> right? When they yeah. had to, the things they had to overcome, mm -hmm. right? To get the things that we take for granted, right? Um, or yeah, we don't have any real value for them because in the attempts to make things better for the generations after us, we sometimes do not prepare them for life without it. So we are Absolutely. very good at we are yeah. very good at providing and we not yeah. and protecting from. We're not very good at preparing for. Yeah, so. agreed, agreed. Um, I think just piggybacking on that, 
because and and that i think it's more so yes there is the mental health aspect to it, but i think it's about life in general so for instance um there may be parents again so our the older generations might have been like i had to walk eight miles or whatever so if you have to travel like that's that's okay like you need to learn the skill because what happens if somebody's not around to take you blah 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 mm-hmm. and then come here come the millennials like well you know i had to do this and i just want to make sure that my child is more comfortable than i was and there's nothing wrong with that but then they miss out on basic life skills so unless you have somebody to drop or pick you up somewhere you don't know how to travel and then what if god forbid the car that usually comes and gets you shuts down and your mother and your father can't come and get you what's going to happen you don't know how to go by this time and take a taxi or a maxi and go home like so there it's not just mental health and i think when we look at some of those what we would refer to as quote-unquote basic life skills right that's why why some of the older generations may look at the younger ones as quote-unquote soft you know so i think but again <laughs> conversely not maybe not the the gen z's so much but i mean them to some extent but even for us the the latter end of the millennials um i asked my mother how much she paid how much she and my father paid for the house that we live in <laughs> they got married yeah. in 1977 and i think they came into that house maybe by 1979, 1980. How, how much do you think we paid for the house? Five beans. Five beans. <laughs> <laughs> Magic beans? <laughs> let, me, let me be a little more realistic then. Because mm-hmm. avocado apparently is still in the industry rhymes. <laughs> Five one dollar silver coins. <laughs> oh, Alright, so um, you went too far back. Right? So, but apparently, I think they paid maybe like $50,000. Right? Now, yeah. to us, the generation that had to deal with um, the, the you know, Wall Street crashing and COVID and bird flu and all of those things, mm-hmm. right? And a housing market, which is absolutely horrible right now. Oh, hot garbage juice. What would we not... We would, we would kill, we would die to get, you know... Men walking, men walking at 50,000 cash to buy a Civic. To get robbing um in the mall. Thank you. Like, like we would do anything somebody to, on Facebook to get say so. to get houses in that. You know, so I bring that up to say that sometimes like why they while they may like perceive us as softer, it's also because we they they have left <laughs> intentionally or unintentionally, they have left an economy and a world where we have to fight extra hard we have to fight doubly hard to get half the things that they did easier or back more in, easily back in them day one person working could have afforded the mortgage for the house yeah. now two people right going to get a mortgage a 1.5 million dollar mortgage two people gonna get a mortgage and the kids going to have to probably finish paying off mm. And then remember, we're doing things a lot later in life as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, whereas people were getting married at 19, 20, 21. Um, popping out kids. Yes. Like, you know, like that. Like now we are, it's, it's later on in life. You have a shorter time span to pay off a mortgage. Like there's so many differences that account for perceptions of situations. And I want to be, I want to be mindful of that as well. Because that mm-hmm. plays a role. Because that also incorporates the culture. To the younger generations, we are more aware and more open to mental health, which is crucial and key. But a lot of the things that our older generation counterparts would have gotten more easily or that was more readily available, we can't. And that also negatively impacts our mental health. Things like jobs. You know? Things like jobs, being, you know, homes, like food, like all of these things, right? Um, but then we also, you know, have... Again, millennials being in the, in the middle. We also have the younger ones who don't know what it is to play in the road mm-hmm. or to climb oh. a tree who never saw wait and text Sorry, All right, just, that was a private. Oh, yeah, yeah. that one is yeah, like I had that one loaded jail. Yeah, you know, I did because I have some clients. Anyway, I digress. We need yeah. to keep it local. They never see men in gray. I never saw that. What is that? Wow. Wow. So you never see, you never see men in grade two flight at the Ibis then? 
No, but you know what they never see as well? Westwood Park. How about that? Hey, what are you doing, mate? So, Jill, you, you, well, you even know what Calabash Alley is? You're fast. Yes, I do. But you never see my name. This, anyway, no, you know I what? I don't know what that is. Kenny. I, I, I went Kenny. to a bus. What's men, men in green, oh? You went where? A bus school. Oh, my gosh. When they used to show two movies in the cinema. Oh, my gosh. I so miss doubled with. If I had the money, guys, I was going to open my own cinema. And it would only be doubled with. I want Kenny to go in the cinema in the middle of the day and then come out in the night. That's mm-hmm. the vibes. Yep. You you can yep. you can get into and out of a whole relationship by the time them them, them two movies start and finish. Big facts. True true story. And it's a quite yes to get over that. True story. But anyway. But we I digress. Want, I want Kenny to get the rights to some of these um or to yeah, see how best you can get permission so that you know during the night I wouldn't mind putting on whack if they're showing um I don't want to say that. I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that. Kenny, I know you're listening because you know that we speak excellent content here in the living room and you know this is your favorite program. So we know you're mm-hmm. listening. I think that's suggestion, no? Yeah. But we, we also you- need to get we also mm-hmm. need to get um like you know how they do all these like revivals? They need to revive Western Park. They do. Yeah. I I'd watch I, it. You know, do them kind of remake something sometimes they spoil the integrity of the show huh? true but i think we need it i think we need westwood park like this is true that it was top tier local content like mm. and on a sunday everybody was watching it like big up room big up room for actually going to la and um doing what it takes to be able to come back and contribute to our film industry i am mm. um, looking at some of the guys like kyle boss and um and Junior, and, and Lee. Junior Lee and these fellas, all your up there content, or no? Jump out, jump up out, there. jump out, right? Let J- us jump use, out on to chat with two teams. Let us use that whole influencer thing and let's make it ours. We have a lot of, according to Kivo, what is with this Halloween nonsense? Oh, don't even start me. Don't start with that, right? So, was it, we, we have a we have rich folklore and rich history and rich culture and and dynamics and of our very own stories to tell so let's let's get those stories told um in terms of the in terms of recognizing the challenges that the different generations have with respecting the experiences of the other generations let us be mindful all right grandparents parents older folks please acknowledge that y'all might have gotten a job and worked your way up through the company and gotten your plaque and your watch and your retirement after dinner. spending 40 years all right we might get a two years con where people will take a two years yes. contract mm-hmm. right that's what's available that is what the that the job economy the job market has changed Drastically. right y'all, y'all might have been able to walk eight miles to go to school in the morning but if we try that now we probably gonna get a heat stroke because it is literally hotter than it has been hashtag global warming and uh, according to 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 Ruana Haynes and the excellent work um that is going on with terms of our climate change reps big up Ruana we are the temperatures we are experiencing now are the coolest they are going to be for the foreseeable future wild right? there are now, things we just can't do that y'all did now also we also have to say to the older generation as well, stop keeping the familial secrets. Uh, no, 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 secrets. No, the no, fami- no. There's a whole other convo, jail. Yeah, the familial projections onto the younger generation. Mm. Not because the NCS, your child married at 25, mean that they are failure. Mm. Plenty it- with them kind of things, huh? Oh, expectations do contribute cultural expectations do contribute to mental health no so guys begin and, 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 and we're perilous we're perilous we're perilous we're perilous but this is important i need to find this out because jail jail is a smart woman right and she's li- she, she know people and things oh okay don't, don't, don't sell this short girl what i want you to answer for me is mm. how when they didn't want you have boyfriend and girlfriend Mm. right they didn't let you go nowhere they didn't let you do nothing they sent you to school for an additional four to eight years depending on how it was right True. and then everybody that you bring home that have a problem with where they expect these magic grandchildren to come out from when you find out the answer to that question please inform me 
inform mm. me thusly because i also would like to know i just curious i just curious well you know what we need we, we need to do a panel i will call it a granil because it's only grandparents and great grandparents you're gonna bring Ooh. on and we gotta find out bring them in the studio for that oh yes yeah Aaron, we know that Come unless on, they have right? grandparents who can <laughs> set up the zoom for them we got that's our real that's a real serious point. I almost soaked down my, almost spit all the water in my mouth with that <laughs> one. You should, you should have worn me. Uh, sorry. I uh, don't understand. My... Nah, but that's a real serious thing, huh? Because <laughs> and I want to wrap up tonight's show with a Facebook status that I saw over this weekend. Let's mm-hmm. see. By a, a no, you tell us on Facebook, huh? Just saying. I'm not going to say that. By a mutual friend of ours, Cardo. Mm-hmm. That he took his daughter to Prayers Fest. Really? Yeah, and he say he was the daughter said, Bye daddy, you could go and lime somewhere else and come back for me. And he said that gave him heart palpitations because it reminded him of his days mm-hmm. when he was in prayers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Be fair, huh. yeah. So <laughs> to the to the parents out there, as Ricardo fondly says, remember you are not raising children, you are raising adults. Prepare them for adulthood. Prepare them for those difficult decisions. Prepare them for the uncomfortable conversations. And prepare them as well to take care of themselves and practice proper self-care. Because mental well-being is it goes hand in hand with physical well-being. If you ain't mentally good, the physics, oh good, I say the physics, yes, the physical could be off and badly affected as well. Do, 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 do. all right jill anybody you want to say good night to anything you want to remind us of before we wrap up um you know good night to everybody who's listening to walk thank you for all these supporters especially of chit chat with two t's uh we appreciate you a lot of them also watch walk so thanks for your continued support look out for season five um coming soon to to a youtube a youtube near you um so thank you for that and also just mental health is not just in the labels and the conditions mental health is in your everyday right your mental health is linked inextricably to your physical health so you can't have good mental health if you don't have good physical health and you can't have good physical health if you don't have good mental health it's okay to acknowledge whatever emotions come up but don't get consumed by them and i think that's where we kind of fall short right so just remember your mental health is also your wealth so take good care of it and be there for each other and encourage other people to take care of their mental health too i love that um thank you very much jill for taking this time out of your busy schedule to spend with us in the living room no problem people come see me at ekilib counseling and consulting services information below i don't know i just said that yeah it just Ricardo, anything you want to say before we head out? Yeah, this is Ricardo Mitchell, the social sage on the global stage. Thank you for joining us in the living room. Remember, guys, the hourglass is opaque. We don't know how much time remains. So whatever you're doing, be good and stay safe. Uh, JL, thank you so much for everything you have done for my mental health, for my career. I like, all I Aww. even know, um, Chit Chat with Two T's has launched so many things. Hey, big up WAC for giving me the opportunity to work in a space where mental health um can be at the core of the conversation i appreciate you guys guys remember please don't take your mental health for granted uh it is a lot more expensive it is a lot more expensive the longer you ignore it all right, right. Yeah, and it's don't, don't get happy done knowing what the issue is don't make it worse and knowing what the issue is don't excuse you from working on it all right um that me day uh love all you aaron and this is your truly DJ Aaron H68. I remind you each and every time that culture is my code. Well, uh, and I no, say currency, no? Not yet, not yet. I say in this from a total place of transparency here. If you realize certain signs and symptoms that your body is reacting to, and you go to the doctor. And they realize that the doctor says everything is good, all your vitals okay. I think you should also take the time to go and see a therapist as well. 
because I have it, a therapist. Because it could be that a mental health issue is manifesting itself now in the body. That's right. There's some a place of it just happened to me. So don't let my experience. I'm allowing, sorry, I'm allowing my experience to be a teaching moment for you. Mm. Right? I always end by telling you that love is the currency. So spend some today. Let somebody know you love them, guys. And as I said, I'm not here Friday. Next week, Tuesday, be back. Mr. Desmond is up next for the big band once he's back from TTV in, in Miami. TTV in Miami. Yeah. All right, keep it locked, guys.